Hello, welcome to the program. First tonight, a follow-up to last night's story about the Director of Public Prosecutions, Paul Rofe QC, and his frequent gambling activities during office hours. Today, the Attorney-General, Michael Atkinson, told Parliament that he'd sought legal advice as to whether Mr Rove should be sacked, saying his behaviour was less than desirable. While Mr Rove has retained his position, his legal colleagues are fuming at this program for including the DPP in our questioning of the workings of the criminal justice system generally. As Graham Archer reports, prominent QC Michael Abbott wanted to respond on behalf of the Law Society. What about the gambling? I don't regard it as a problem. There are also rumours that you had lost large sums at the casino. Yes, I've heard those rumours. They're not true? No. But you do like a flutter on the horses. I do. Then mm. mm. it's actually a bit more than a flutter. No, I wouldn't call it more than a flutter. We checked out the stories and one day recently you took 12 visits to the TAB in one day, in a working day, and five visits to the news agency to buy scratches. Must know someone's looking after me. Last night's story on the workday gambling routine of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Paul Rofe QC, attracted considerable interest. I just wondered whether that makes you <coughs> somewhat vulnerable in the position you're in. I think you've got to be careful of what you do, what you seem to be doing, yes. It also attracted its share of criticism, not the least of which came from the DPP's legal colleagues. Michael, when we asked the President of the Law Society to respond to our story on Paul Rofe, they deputised you for the job. Have you got sharper teeth? It's not a question of sharper teeth. Um, your program went much further than mere criticism of Mr Rofe's work practices. I mean, I, firstly, I think you owe, you owe Mr. Rofe an apology. Um, on, what, on what score? Well, on, in view of what you said. I mean, now's your opportunity to apologise. Michael Abbott QC is one of Adelaide's most prominent criminal barristers and one of the most vocal critics. I take it you will apologise to him for what you said to him? Well, I don't think there's any need to apologise. Paul Rofe himself said that he'd done the wrong thing. Your program linked his work practices to what you perceive to be miscarriages of justice uh, and uh, defects in the judicial system. And it's, it's uh, what you said, so far as the Law Society is concerned about the judicial system, that I think demands a response. First things first, to his credit, Paul Rofe didn't shy away from his image of gambling at work as being a matter of legitimate public interest when interviewed on ABC Radio this morning. Although you may feel that the public perception um, is distorted because it doesn't take into account your after hours work, do you agree that there is a public interest issue here? Yes, I do. We don't have trial by media, we have trial by courts. But when the courts aren't operating correctly, in specific cases, then surely it's the right of the media to issue a debate about that. Well, you, you arrogate that right to yourself. I mean, I don't accept that you have got a right to assert that the courts aren't operating correctly. But you don't know, Michael, exactly the cases I'm talking about. Well, I, I, of course I don't. So but, you're, you're, you're but, just simply making a but I suggest sweeping you, statement. I suggest that you don't either. And I mean, uh, you might have done well, some research Well, is that, is that some not the height of arrogance? No, no, no. I just, just Is that not the height of arrogance I'm just to suggest just that I don't know what I'm talking about when, in fact, <laughs> you've admitted well, you don't know what I'm talking about? Well, well look, you, you can debate it that way uh, if you like. However, we weren't suggesting the DPP was responsible for all the shortcomings of the system, but that his lapse in concentration was indicative of other lapses in observing proper procedures such as those in the prosecution of the Keogh case, in which Mr Rofe did play a central role. You can have program after program on Liddy's case or Keogh's case. I don't care. You can also raise, as a matter of legitimate public interest, uh, concerns that you might have about any officer who holds any public office. But what you've done in your program is to link what you perceive to be miscarriages of justice mm -hmm. with the fact that, as you assert, Paul Rofe doesn't put in 24 hours a day or put in uh, all the hours between nine and five. But how can you challenge any case without also bringing into question the action of the prosecution and the courts? And one would expect Michael Abbott, 
to be a bit more tolerant of an investigative media given he represented Edward Splatt in the Splatt Royal Commission in 1983, which overturned a murder conviction based on flawed forensic evidence. And that Royal Commission did not occur because the system worked properly. It occurred because the system failed. And it also occurred because the media ran a campaign to say that there had been an injustice. Now, what I'm saying to you is, here's a challenge. Why not look at the Keogh case? Do you think we would bother to go to this length? Well, I don't know what motivates you, but I know that you're not in, you're not, uh, in Stuart Coburn's league. Thanks for the uh, reference. I'm just simply sitting here saying to you that there is substantial questions that need answering. Now, would you be prepared to look at the case? And there are other QCs who at least historically acknowledge the crucial role of the media when the court systems fail. In this case, the media's champion is Mari Shaw QC, delivering a speech on behalf of Adelaide's criminal lawyers. Mr Splatt was convicted, but a journalist named Stuart Coburn came to read his correspondence and came to believe in his innocence. He set about publicising the imperfections of the prosecution's case, using the media to expose the unfairness that had occurred during the trial. I have no doubt that but for Mr Coburn, Mr Splatt would still be in jail. But of course that was then and this is now. And the society's members aren't so generous in advance. But perhaps that's to be expected. There are lots of things that irk us in the society in which we live, but they're the rules by which we live. I'm accountable to the public. Graham Archer with that report.